So I want to talk about the um, uh, Reynolds number, and I thought I'd use the tablet so you could uh, see it, because we're going to put down numbers, make sure you see it well. So if you have a specific type of fluid, it usually has about a fixed density and a fixed viscosity, while the flow speed and the flow depth change through time. What I want to talk about now is the effect of density and viscosity of the fluid um, on the flow. So we have uh, three main uh, uh, types of uh, fluids that we're going to talk about. And we have the density and the viscosity. And we have liquid water. And I'm just going to say water for that. Um, we have ice. And we have air. There are other types of flows too, but these are the ones we're going to talk about. So the density of both water and ice are about, we're going to use kilograms and meters, so 10 to the 3 kilograms per meters cubed. That's about 1 gram per centimeter cubed. And the same is true uh, for ice. It's slightly less, which is why it floats but it's pretty similar. And of course, air is much less dense. Uh, it's about, it's a little more than one uh, kilogram per meter cube, but it depends a lot on the density of the air and how much water is in it. So we have air being much less dense. In terms of uh, viscosity, the viscosity of water is about 10 to the minus three and that's kilograms per meter second. So that's how fast it flows um, relative to the mass. For ice, it's very, very dependent on the temperature. And for ice, it ranges from 10 to the plus 3 to greater than 10 to the 20th kilograms meter second. So this, uh, the, it's uh, um, less viscous at warm temperatures and it's more viscous when it's cold. Right? So ice and glaciers that are warm flow much faster than glaciers that are cold. And then the viscosity of air is uh, very low it's uh, 1.8 uh, times 10 to the minus 5 uh, kilograms meters meters second. Okay. So what we see here, I'm going to change change to another color, is that uh, the density of water and ice are about the same, but water having a much lower viscosity than even the fastest flowing ice means that it flows much faster. The air has an even lower viscosity and that's one of the reasons that um, uh, the wind it has so much turbulence because we have the viscosity in the denominator of, of the Reynolds number. So the smaller this number is, the bigger the Reynolds number and the more turbulence that's present. Okay, so I'm going to write the Reynolds number again over here so we can refer to it. So we have the flow speed times the flow depth times the density over the viscosity. Okay, so you'll notice that we have the um, density over the viscosity as the two properties of the flow. So what we can do is we can actually take the ratio of these two to understand how the difference in density and viscosity um, affect the Reynolds number. So if we look at the ratio, we have 10 to the third divided by 10 to the minus third, so that's 10 to the 6th 
and the units from the bottom, the second, and we have one meter that counts as that one of the three before. Uh, so we have meters squared. Okay. Uh, we can we'll take the warmest ice, um, and uh, you can see here that if we take the warmest ice, 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the 3 is 1 centimeters or seconds per meter squared. And then if we take air and divide those two, um, we get, uh, let's see, I have to divide um, 1 over 1.8. And I actually calculated that with the others, but it's about 6.8 times 10 to the fifth seconds per meter squared. So if we look at, if we compare these numbers, go back to the yellow here, what we see is this, for ice, it's very low. And because that multiplier is low, the Reynolds number is usually uh, less than 500. Okay. So, for example, if you wanted it to be 500, you'd have to have either a really fast flow speed or really, really thick ice. However, it's very hard to get a fast flow speed if you have a very small viscosity. So if we look at water, 10 to the 6th is 100,000. And so almost always, this is high enough that usually um, the Reynolds number is greater than 2,000. However, the Reynolds number does depend on the flow speed. So we go back, right, right here. And if the flow speed of the water is zero, that will make the Reynolds number zero. So it's usually um, a turbulent flow, but not all the time. Uh, we can also look at it uh, for the air. And so uh, the air here, this number is also um, large, so we can say this is high, and that also means that the air is usually turbulent. So even when air is still, though, we do have this interesting case uh, for the air, and I'll make the air, the comment on the air light blue. Here, um, usually, because we're dealing with a very thick atmosphere, L, the depth of the flow, is also large. And what that means is that for air, the Reynolds number is usually much greater than 2,000, and wind has a lot of turbulence. If you've been in a strong windstorm, especially when the flow speed is high, uh, you know that there's a lot of force to that wind. Okay, so the next set of videos are going to be uh, showing some examples of some of these flows. Thanks for watching.